In this video, we're going to do a deep dive film breakdown into the bootlegs that come off of the wide zone from the Shanahan McVay system. We're even going to go all the way back to when Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator for Gary Kubiak and the Houston Texans in the late 2000s. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a couple things that I think make this a lot more viable at the high school level, so make sure you stick around. Now, this isn't the first film breakdown we've done of play action from Kyle Shanahan. I have done a deep dive into the drift concept that I'll link up in the top corner, so make sure you check that out. But one of the differences between drift and these concepts is that drift is a play pass. So play pass and play action pass are two very different things. A play action pass is just whenever we're making a run fake and there's a pass off of it. A play pass in the Shanahan system is we're going to fake the run, but the quarterback is going to open deep after the run. He's not going to boot out. He's just going to open straight back. And what the play pass does is it really allows you to use the whole field, like the drift concept, one of the best ways to run it now is to have the drift coming from the play side, especially with the rise of quarters, that quarter safety coming down to fit the box. The drift's going to come right behind it. Make sure to check the video out to see it. But with the bootleg, that's what they call a movement pass. We're moving the pocket, and we're really only going to be able to throw on half the field for the vast majority of the time. Now, there are some exceptions towards the end of the video. Again, make sure you stick around for those. But play action really encompasses both of those, the play pass and the movement pass. So what we're looking at today really is just the movement pass, and it's different variations. So let's dive in. So we're starting here with the basic keeper concept and keeper for a lot of people just means the quarterback's keeping it and booting it out. But I kind of like to think from the Shanahan system that it's almost like a route combination. So we're going to get the run fake going to the left. We're faking 19, which is outside zone to the left. Quarterback is going to boot out to the right. So again, I think of this as the base concept. Some people call like Y cross. That's a whole field concept. I kind of think of keeper as a whole field concept. So with keeper from the play side, number one, that's this guy right here. You're going to primarily get a run back if he's wider. We'll see that here in a few clips, uh, but that's really like a comeback and it's going to go 25 to 20 is where they're really running that. From a cut split, he's going to run what they call the high corner. Okay, so this is not just a corner. Uh, you're getting a little bit higher. You're also going to get an inside stem on the release so that you're, you're trying to take the attention of the corner and the safety. From the play side number two receiver, you're going to get a slam if he's in a tight end position. So that means you're going to really protect the C-gap you want to make sure that defensive end thinks that he's trying to get cut off on an outside zone run to the left. Then he's, you're going to give him your back and spin out into the flat. Now we'll see here in a few clips the break concept where it's more of a fullback position or if the tight end is on the other side. And what the break does is it really protects the C-gap too. You're just kind of pulling and wrapping around so when the quarterback boots out, that defensive end is going to come right into you. Again, we'll see that here in a couple of clips. Now, the magic comes from the backside number two. He runs the low cross. So I mentioned Y cross. You know, one of the biggest coaching points with Y cross you hear is uh, like 18 to 22 yards or 15 to 18 yards. The low cross is from 12 to 14 yards in the Shanahan system. But similarly here, you want to run this over the linebackers under the first one. That's this down safety right here and then over the rest of them. Then the backside number one is gonna run what they call a far corner, pretty similar to like a take two post. He's really trying to take this corner with him and then take the free safety if he's in the middle of the field and not chasing that high corner so that way the low cross can come open. So the way that you're gonna read the keeper concept is the low cross is number one. So the quarterback's gonna boot out, he's looking to the low cross first, if the low cross isn't open, he's going to look to the run back or the high corner from whoever that play side number one is. That'll give that person time to make their break before the quarterback throws the ball. If there's nothing there, we are looking in the flat to the slam 
or the break. Now the slam and the break, if there's only one of them, also doubles as the hot throw. So if the quarterback's getting pressure, then whoever has the slam or the break is just going to let it all go, turn around, find the quarterback, show his hands, and that's where the ball is going to go. Now the backside far corner is an alert, so we never tell the quarterback to put that in the progression, right? This is just a very standard bootleg concept right here. You always tell the quarterback, do not throw that unless I tell you very same thing here. So if you actually want the quarterback to throw that far corner, the way you would do that is in your play call, you would say, we're going to run fake 19 keeper alert. And this would be the zebra receiver or the F receiver in this formation. So let's see how this plays out. All right, we're getting cover three from the defense. We can tell the free safety here. He's staying deep. He's not crashing down on the low cross. He's supposed to be the center fielder. The strong safety that was down over the low cross, he's either forcing the run or he's trying to crack or place from thinking that maybe the X receiver was going to try and get up to the free safety. Either way, he let him go, released the under, and now we've got the low cross running across the field. The boot side linebacker reads that it is a boot too late. So quarterback is going to hit that low cross. It's textbook. Looking at another one. Again, we're running the keeper concept. Same formation. This one actually started in trips. And we motioned over to a doubles formation. Going to be the same deal here. Run fake is going this way. Quarterback is going to boot out this way. So we've got our run back. We're actually going to see the run back here opposed to the far corner. We've got our slam from the tight end. We've got our low cross from the slot receiver. Then we've got the far corner from the backside number one. So here we're getting cover nine from the defense. The difference with cover nine and cover three is which safety rotates. Last clip was cover three because the safety had rotated down to the two receiver side, which is the passing strength. In cover nine, you're rotating away from the passing strength, which in this case was the left side. So it's this safety coming down because the two receivers are at the top of the screen. So we're getting cover nine from the defense. All right. The hook to curl linebacker has fit the run. So now this safety that was coming down to play the curl to flat is the only player in that window. Obviously, he can't do both. So he's choosing here. He pulls up. So he's choosing to take away the low cross first, and he's going to let the ball bring him down to the flat. The run back is covered. So we've missed our first read by the safety staying in that curl window. The run back is covered. The flat is wide open. So we just got to throw it and get what we can get after the catch. Now we're going to look at keeper to a trips formation. So this kind of changes up the routes, right? So one of the things with the air raid, like it's going to be concepts, right? We run Y cross, but we're still just calling Y cross, even two by two or three by one. The concept is that we've got a, uh, a go on the front side. We've got somebody in the flat. We've got the cross coming across. Then we've got somebody else in the flat on the back side. And we've got the dig curl. It's kind of the same deal as far as teaching concepts with these. We're going to have the run back as the play side number one. And then the low cross is going to be the first person outside the tackle has the low cross is kind of the, the basic rule here. And so we just lose that far corner because we don't have a second player. But we've gained an extra flat receiver on the play side. So one of the reasons you would run this from trips here, not only just to give the defense a different look, but because we have somebody else in the flat, now the tight end can play really, really long on this defensive end and even just straight up block him if he needs to because we've already got somebody else that's taking that spot in the progression. So we've got our run back by the number one. Our number two is still technically running that slam route. It's more kind of a pivot route from the slot. You're not really slamming down on a defensive end, but it's the same concept. We're stepping inside and then we're getting our back out to the defense. We've got the second slam coming from the tight end. Then we've got our low cross coming from the backside. So here, quarterback turns around and the flat's open. The low cross wasn't quite as open, so we throw the flat route on the slam. 
So here we're getting keeper from a doubles open formation. We get the exact same routes. Okay, we're going to have our run back by the play side number one. We're booting out this way. Runs coming this way. We've got our run back by the play side number one. We've got our slam by the play side number two. We have lost the backside C gap protection because he's not tight to the formation, but it's still the same route. Then we've got our low cross coming from the first guy outside there and then the far corner from the number one. So really these first couple of clips were just showing really just the versatility of this one concept. Always helps when you're throwing to uh, Julio Jones in his prime too. So now we're going to run keeper to a, a pro flank. So we've got our tight end in all the past ones that have a tight end. We've been running away from him. He's been the slam flat player. Now we're running towards him, and he's going to be the low cross. He's the first person outside the tackle here. We're still getting that slam from the slot. Again, we don't have that backside protection, but it is all the same routes. We've got our run back by the number one, slam by the number two, low cross by the backside number one, and then our far corner by the backside. Really like running this to a tight end because the linebackers don't know what to do. They've got to fit the run, but now the tight end's coming behind them really puts them in conflict in my opinion so here we've got another three by one set we've got 12 personnel we've got two tight ends a four-man surface on the right and we're running away from them runs going this way boots coming this way just like it did when we were in trips a few plays ago we have two slam routes but now because they're both on the line of scrimmage we kind of give that quarterback some extra protection but the routes are all the same as when we were in trips. We've got the low cross coming from the backside. We've got our run back from the play side number one, and then we have our double slams. So one of those guys is going to be able to stay longer, whichever one gets engaged, while the other one can pop out into the flat. There he goes. He was staying on the defensive end for a while. Then he comes off into the flat. So now we get to running some sweep motion. And one of the consequences is we are losing that far corner because we don't have the receiver over there. But this is something that a lot of teams do when they're running the ball. The Rams especially are really well known for this motion. But even in high school, right, how many teams run a, a jet sweep fake and then pass the ball behind it? So this is really going to increase the credibility of your run fake. But from here, all our routes are staying the same. We've got our high corner from our tight number one. We've got our slam from our tight end number two. Then we've got our low cross coming from our backside tight end, the first guy outside the tackle. In the playbook, sometimes they'll show this sweep kind of turning into a wheel or the running back turning into a wheel. I didn't see that on film. Uh, but it is something that you can do regardless. So again, the increased credibility of the run fake there opens up the low cross. All right, going back to Houston, we have our first tag off of keeper, and that is the takeoff. What the takeoff is, is you are faking the run back. You are actually going to come back to the ball. Then you're going to stick your foot in the ground again and get vertical from there. So instead of running this from 25 to 20, uh, this is actually about 15 yards that you want to make this first cut. Otherwise, the quarterback's just not going to be able to wait that long. So when we're running the takeoff, this is the primary read, right? And then it just goes normal from there. Then the low cross becomes the two, and then your flat becomes the three, still alerting the far corner on the backside. Now we are going to see that break technique here in this play the y shifted across right we were in doubles first and now we've shifted across to create a trips formation especially with the takeoff you want to give your quarterback as much time as possible to try and hit it and the break is a little bit more protective than the slam because the break's first priority is to seal that edge whereas the slam is you're just walling him off long enough to where the quarterback can boot around break you're really really holding that edge as long as possible now you do see the dot 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 
Uh, the brake can convert to a slide route that we'll look at. If there's only one person coming off the edge like this defensive end here, the goal for the brake is to pin him outside in so that when the quarterback boots, we've got the leverage on him. But if there are two coming off the edge, maybe this safety comes down, then the quarterback needs to throw hot. So the break route, you're not even going to block any of them. You're just going to bluff them, get straight to the flat, and expect the ball right now. So I think of takeoff as a tag to the original keeper concept because it stays the same for everybody else. We'll look in a few clips at one that I wouldn't call keeper. I would call something else because it changes more than one person's job. But the, everything else is the same here other than we're converting the run back to a takeoff. So this would be keeper Z takeoff to me. So unfortunately, the quarterback doesn't actually throw the takeoff here. We can still break it down, um, but I would make the takeoff the first progression. But it looks here like they still keep the low cross as number one. Again, maybe that's something there uh, as far as changing the tag like we talked about. But we saw the little stutter step by the receiver here, just enough to get the cornerback to slow down and then readjusting. He is wide open on the 50 up here, but so is the low cross, and it's a little bit easier of a throw to make. So maybe that's why they keep that first in the progression there. Never going to complain about a 20 yard gain. All right, so here we have shallow. Now, this is one where I would not call keeper. This would be fake 18Z shallow to me because we've changed more than one person's job, right? With the takeoff, it was just the run back becomes a takeoff, but everybody else is the same. With shallow, what we're going to get is we're going to get a shallow cross from one of the players in the tight stack. Right now, he's the one that's on the ball. And then the one who's off the ball is going to get a spray release, an outside release, he's going to run the low cross, then we're still getting our far corner from the number one on the back side. Number one to the boot side, we're going to be booting out this way. He's still running his run back or his high corner, but I would call this a shallow because we don't have that backside protection to get into the flat. He's actually coming from across the formation, and this is one that I'll mention again if you stick around towards the end of the video. This is one that I would make an adjustment to. But shallow, again, we're going to have three players coming across. We're going to have the shallow cross. We're going to have the low cross. Then we're going to have the far corner. So moving into one of my favorite tags for the keeper concept, we're getting into the slide route. And I really like this because he's coming under the formation. So it's not like shallow where he's getting a shallow cross and he's trying to pull the linebackers. We're trying to hide this guy behind the formation. He's going to pop out and he's hardly going to be covered. Now with the slide, we're also going to get a progression change. So the slide route is going to be the number one read. And it's kind of like pre-snap read in a quick game because the quarterback, as soon as he turns around, as soon as he can get eyes on the flat route, if it's open, you throw it. So it doesn't really change the timing for the low cross or for the high corner or the run back because he doesn't have to get all the way around from his boot fake to throw the slide. We've got a clip of it. We're going to watch here in a few, but keep that in mind that the slide route is number one in the progression, but still we're getting our low cross coming across on the backside. Then we've got our high corner coming from the play side. Number one, we got our slide route. Now you'll notice there's only three routes here. The running back's into his. Uh, the tight end who's right here just gets involved with the blocking. So we've got a three-man route pretty much. We've got keeper F slide. Wide open linebackers fitting the run, just letting him turn loose. Now this is really a play on one of their primary run concepts, which is the sift. So they're faking outside zone here to the right. And then this is really faking the sift block that comes back on that defensive end. It's not quite a bluff. He's not really bluffing. You can tell he's just really getting out in the flat. But from the linebacker's perspective, it's really, really hard to tell that in that split second. So now we're going to get slide to a, uh, to a three receiver side. 
and we're actually going to get everybody who's not the running back involved in the route. This is actually going to be keeper X slide. So our X is going to be running the slide route. We still have our high corner. We've got our low cross. And then because we've got everybody out in the route, we're going to get our far corner too. So the far corner is going to really take the attention of that safety. High corner's got the cornerback here, low cross, and the slide. So here the defensive end picks up the slide route, right? Quarterback turns around, and it is not there. He falls off with it. So what are we doing now? Looking for the low cross. And there it is, 20 yards down the field. Here we've got X slide again. This time, this is a two-by-two two set. The last two we've looked at, even the one where the tight end stayed in blocking, were three-by-one. So I really like this variation better because we're going to get that backside C-gap protection from the slam. Now, we might be worried about two guys getting out into the flat. It is not a concern because the slide's coming right now. He's not blocking anybody, and this slam is really going to wash down and then pop out. So it is kind of a horizontal stretch. We're going to get a receiver at the top of the screen over here. Then we'll get another one back over here. They are far enough away to where they're not in the same zone. So we're still going to get our high corner from the tight end. And then we've got our low cross coming across from the Z. So remember I said as soon as the quarterback turns around, if the slide route is open, you throw it. Now, make no mistake, there's not really anything open downfield, but Garoppolo has just turned around. He's just got eyes on the flat route, so that's what he's throwing. So like I said, it is almost like a pre-snap read because you can almost see this while you're on your way to looking at the low cross window. The low cross might not be open yet, so again, I think of it kind of like a pre-snap read for a movement pass. But if the slide route is open, when you turn around, you throw it, you get your guy who is your space playmaker, you get him the ball with plenty of room to work, and let him do his job. So just like we saw with the regular keeper concept, we can run keeper slide with the sweep motion. We're going to see that here. So everything else is the same. We've still got our flood concept, right? Our three-level stretch. We've got our high corner. We've got our low cross. Then we're going to have our slide coming back across. It's not the receiver that's in motion. He's faking his run. You know, one of the trademarks that I absolutely love from the Shanahan McVay system is when we get that sweep motion to the play side to really pull that linebacker out. We'll talk about that in another video, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see that. But this is, a again, a really great way to really increase the integrity of your run fake there. So here, slide route again, open right away, throw it, especially when I get the ball there to Kittle with room to work. So those were the basic movement concepts there, specifically keeper and keeper slide. So those three are really just the primary movement concepts. Now we're going to get into some of the auxiliary ones. You can kind of consider them trick plays for movement passes. So if you ask me what my favorite play is, this is it right here, leak. Now, you might think like wide zone should be it. Like I consider wide zone a run scheme, all the different things you can do off of it. I'm talking about a specific play. Leak is my favorite. I just love the way it works, and we're going to look at it right here. So leak is a double fake play call, right? So you're faking the run to the left right here, and then you're faking the flood concept to the right, and after all that double fake, you got somebody wide open in the seam on the opposite side of the field. So we're going to do everything we can to take away defenders from the opposite seam, right? We're going to be faking the run over here to get your force defender down, right? Then we've got the bootleg. We've got the high corner, right, that we're trying to take the attention of the safety away. And it works to absolute perfection in this clip. So we've got the... Tight end coming across, right, on the low cross. High corner is taking the corner and the safety. The thing about leak is you're like fake run blocking right here with the tight end. So there's so inconspicuous, right, he's just going to slip right through here completely unblocked. We've got the break 
from the fullback here so we can give the quarterback a little bit of time to set up. Boom, by the time the tight end has slipped through, they're following the low cross. They're crashing down on it, right? This is 2019. Jimmy Garoppolo's finally healthy. The 49ers are starting their Super Bowl run. I think this is like week two against the Bengals, and Shanahan has been play calling for the last decade, right? Super known for his, his movement passes off the wide zone, and this really plays off of it. Nobody covering the tight end. You don't see guys that wide open in the NFL ever, and you can with y Leak. So now we're going back to Houston again, right? We've got throwback. This is similar to Leak, but instead of faking and coming across the formation like we did with Leak, we're going to be faking the low cross, and then he's going to cut up the backside scene. So this is actually only a two-man route. We've got the run back coming from the top of the screen, then the fullback is blocking over here. We actually were in a slot formation. The Z was over here. He motions in, and he's going to be running the break on the backside to give the quarterback time to pull up. Then the running back is running his fake. So this is like an all-or-nothing play call. Now, I would run this a little bit differently as far as your routes and the blocking up front, uh, but this would be throwback. If you want to know more about that, stick around, and I'll show you how to find that out. But again, similar to Leak where we're faking something and we're hitting up that backside seam. So the quarterback here is booting out to the right and he's going to throw it back across the field to the throwback. Again, rarely do you see guys that wide open in the NFL. A little bit of a bad throw, catches the receiver off balance and he doesn't get to run up the sideline. All right, last clip here, we're looking at hiccup. So leak is kind of like the OG fake, right? So we're booting out one way. The tight end from the side that we're booting out to is running up the backside seam. Then we've got throwback where we're still booting out away and the guy on the backside is just going to cut it back where he came from. With hiccup, we are actually cutting it across the formation away from the side of the boot. So it's similar to throwback in that regard. So instead of faking the low cross like we would in throwback, we're actually going to fake the high corner and he's going to cut to the post. So right here, the tight end that would be running the high corner if this was just a regular keeper is going to be faking that high corner. He's going to give a little move like he's heading to the corner and then boom, we're cutting to the post. All right, and there's nobody there. The low cross has pulled everybody else. And then we're actually going to get some slide motion to increase that run fake integrity. So look, this is 13 personnel, right? We've got one wide receiver and he is running a route that makes it look like a run even more to increase that run integrity. So if you're anybody on this defense, you've got to be ready to fit the run. There are 10 guys in the box, including the quarterback and the running back. You got eight blockers in the box. Then the only person who's not either handing the ball off or receiving the handoff is making a, a fake like he it is a run play anyway. You've got to be ready to fit the run, and that puts the defense in a tizzy when George Kittle cuts back to the post. Touchdown. All right, so if you've stuck around, we're going to talk about some adjustments that I would make to help these fit better in high school. Now, when you're under center, right, and you want to run wide zone, you can't just read the defensive end. You could if you were offset, but under center, you can't just read him. So they needed a way to control him, and this is how. If the defensive end is just crashing on the run game, then the quarterback can just pull up on his bootleg, and there's nobody out there. That's the primary way or one of the primary reasons to run boot. But in high school, we can't always trust – that this guy is going to do the same thing. On one play, maybe he does crash down. So then your guy in the booth is telling you, hey, that defensive end crashed, let's run boot here. But then on the very next play, he could just chase your quarterback and be completely out of luck. So I would never run these boot concepts without some sort of C-gap protection. Whether that's maybe we're going to run away from the tight end like we saw in the first couple clips and that tight end is going to be responsible there for the end and then getting out into the flat or maybe we're going to run it away from the open edge and we've got a fullback that we can put on a break 
that would be one of the primary ways that I would run it. Now let's talk about some of the route combinations. Again, if we're looking at basic ways to run it, all right, we'd be faking the run to the right, quarterback booting out left here. We'd have our run back by the X. We'd have our low cross by the tight end. We'd have our far corner by the Z. Then our F would be on the break. And again, with the break, you know, you're going to block him. Then once the quarterback is out, you can get out into the flat. You're the third read or you're the hot read anyway, so you can take your time getting out there. This is how I would run just the basic keeper concept. That or maybe we're in a double tight formation. The F is over here and he's got that slam route. But either way there, we're going to have some sort of C-gap protection. Now, shallow was a interesting one there when we were watching film. And I would call shallow its own concept because this is what I would do. I would say that shallow, instead of having a low cross and a far corner, we're going to change the levels on both of those. We're going to have a shallow cross and then a low cross coming behind it. So we're going to abandon the far corner. We'd still have the run back on the front side. Instead of having the low cross in the far corner, we would just be bringing both of those down a level, right? The low cross would turn into a shallow cross. The far corner would turn into the low cross. Maybe we're in two by two and we're going to run it the other way, right? Where the run fakes this way, quarterback's booting out to the right. Tight end would have the slam. We've got our run back, our shallow cross, and our low cross behind it. And that's why I would call shallow something different than keeper is because we're changing the routes of two players, not just one. If you want to dive a little bit deeper into some of the changes that I would make in terms of translating these concepts to the high school level, you know, most everything we saw was one back and we're talking about adding more breaks or more backside C-gap protection. That's going to change either running some stuff from two back or getting into more Y off stuff than the Shanahan offense currently does. I have finished the movement section in my playbook using my free playbook editor, and I'm going to send those to you. Just click the description down below. Now, if you like this video, you like the bootlegs, you like all the different concepts, please give this video a thumbs up. If you love the Shanahan offense, subscribe to my channel because that is primarily what we talk about. And, you know, one of the things that these play action passes help you with is being able to stay balanced. And I think about balance a little bit differently than most people do. Click on this next video and I'm going to tell you all about it.